guys kind of got off to a slow start and kind of every time they went on a run and just never really got over the hump. Sort of a, a weird game in the sense you couldn't really, outside of the shooting, really point to maybe one really glaring area and just yeah, I mean, and you know, it's just it's hard to win when you're minus seven on a three point game. You know, it's 21 points, you know, so it's, uh, um, you know, that was the biggest thing. But I also felt like uh, in, in the second half, we were better um, offensively in the second quarter. You know, we took a lot of like really quick shots that weren't open. We haven't been doing that. That hasn't been a problem. So I felt like, I don't know, like our inside out numbers have been good. Um, like I think going in tonight, we're like six or seven points in the paint. You know, we haven't shot the ball well, which is a problem. But we didn't shoot well tonight. And I don't think the ball hit the paint uh, in the first half nearly enough. That's without watching the film. but. That was the point at halftime when I thought in the third quarter, especially, we were much better, you know. You feel like I know you've been watching the film, but is it easy to kind of feel after the game in the sense of looking at the shooting struggles, we're taking good shots, we're not going there, are there times where you feel like they were not taking good shots? Yeah. No, nah, I, I mean, that's a good quote, but I felt like the, that was the first time in, in, in halftime when I saw, said to them, like, look, and we're just – Taking a lot of like okay shots, questionable shots, you know, and and I in the first half I thought in the second half we we're a lot better. Uh, what bothers you most about a game like tonight? Um, when you guys uh, pretty much trailed the entire game, you couldn't find any kind of rhythm there, or any kind of aiming out there, seemed like this is really hard. Losing, you know, is the hardest thing always. I mean, it's you know they want to win too. Our guys are disappointed. Um, you know, we have this, we had, you know, set this as a 11 game, you know, after after the three days off, right? You know, um, I mean, I'm sorry, after the, um, when we finally got two days off, we have 11 games in 24 days. This was the fifth, we're three and two, you know, and there were two things we want to, you know, get better and win and win at home. And, you know, we had won um, our last three uh, and played much better, you know, and tonight, you know, we weren't near at that level. And they're good, too, obviously. I mean, there's a reason why uh, they're first in defense. And they, they were down some guys, but you're also – every guy that played out the – well, not, it's not too noir. Even uh, the majority of guys they played tonight are guys that are on there in the playing group of teams that, you know, won it, went to the finals. You know, Connington was a big part of that, obviously, George Hill. Uh, Lopez, Portis. Um, so, you know, they still played tonight, you know, with, with th you know, basically three, two full-time starters. Uh, Portis starts some, but those guys are all, you know, high-minute rotation guys. So their defense is disciplined and they know what they're doing and, and they're hard to play against. It seemed like tonight you guys weren't – well, yeah, but the reality is, is that when you go, you know, five for 24 from three, there's not going to be many assists, right? I mean, you know, like the, most of the threes are off the pass, right? Uh, kickouts. If you don't make shots, there's not going to be many. So I thought, I mean, the second half, we moved the ball well. We didn't shoot well. Um, the first half, like, you know, I felt like, we took a lot of like okay shots, you know. And then I know uh, you mentioned before the game you don't have your entire roster and players are still not around. Um, I guess how do you keep the morale of the guys kind of positive after a game like this um, when you know you miss some players and you want to keep a positive message going much? This thing is part of the league. I mean, first of all, like going into today. I could be wrong in this. I think we're like, uh, like three and a half out of tenth. Um, you know, you can't fool players in this league. They know, you know, if you talk to them, they know we need those guys back. You know, they know that right now we have very little room for error. They also know that when we played well, we've won or given ourselves a chance to win. The East, again, from what I've seen, Boston's terrific. These guys are terrific. Uh, there's some other teams that are really good. This isn't like last year where there's 
you know, four or five teams in the East who just aren't very good at all, right? So last year, there were a lot of teams in the East who were going to beat up on. That's not the case this year. So I would say there's a good chance you get into 10th or 9th under 500. And you have to know that. You know, it doesn't matter what your record is. It doesn't matter what place you're in. And they know that. I tell them that. Um, there's a long way to go. And you have to help. You know, so far we've had more than our share of bad breaks. Hopefully that'll change. But I, I don't the, – the spirit part, the play – you know, our effort's been really good, you know, especially – when you look at all the injuries we've had. So I, I don't, you know, like tonight, I mean, I, this isn't, if you want to look, look who they had on the floor, look who we're missing. That's every night for us. So to say, like, this is a bad, it's not like this isn't a bad loss. It's not like if you lined those guys up and said, like, how would you lose? They would beat a lot of teams with the guys they put on the floor tonight. So, I mean, that's, I don't, I hope they don't, if they look, they know enough about the NBA to understand that. Well, you mentioned that. I mean, the, the key to, I guess, the positive uh, frame of mind with the long season, long, long season, I guess, still being left. How does that, uh, I guess, invigorate the guys? You know, like, as you said, that things aren't over yet. There's people on the outside, of course, not you got people on the outside saying, wait a minute, you guys are struggling right now. And, but, but you guys are saying a lot of times, so like, what about that and, and, and keeping well, I mean, first, I would just say this, right? We live in different worlds, you and I, right? So I don't read that, you know, that stuff, right? I love the fans, right? Or the fans that come to the games. Charlotte has a great fan base. But one thing over the years is this, is without the fans, none of us have the jobs, you, me, any of us, right? But I don't have time to worry about, like, I worry about the players. So when people say things like that, the players don't look at it that way, and I don't look at it that way. So that might be a perception because that's who you, you know, whatever, the people that you have to talk to. Those aren't the people that I talk to or, you know, I understand. Listen, I'm a huge sports fan. I get frustrated when my team uh, loses too. And all of it's fair. But when you're involved like this day to day like we are, is I don't think they would look at it at all like what you're talking about. You know, losing's hard, there's no question. But also, we're losing without, you know, look at the guys that are sitting on the bench. I mean, we're playing tonight. Those guys, those guys are starters. They're all in the rotation. You know, we're playing without, however you want to look at it, four or five of the guys that would be our top seven or eight players. Nobody else is doing that right now. So they understand that, you know. Thanks, everyone. Good. Thank you.